Christianpodcast.com. This is the Christian Soul Prepper Podcast Persecution Series, Episode 14. And I'm Brother Lance. Today we'll be covering chapters or day 38 in my book, We Shall Be Like Him, Carry Your Cross, Part 4. <laughs> We are on a mission to help the body of Christ worldwide, preparing the faithful for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We do this by exposing the tricks of the devil, diving deep into the Word of God, and doing life together. Along the way, we'll include a power promise to claim and ridiculous trivia. We are not alone. We have a divine hope for home. Welcome to the Christian Soul Prepper Podcast. Right here, right now, we give you the God's honest truth. Sure to bookmark brotherlance.com for all the latest podcast, video, Bible study, social media, and more. Now, here's your host, Brother Lance. Thank you for subscribing to the podcast and downloading all the wonderful spiritual buffet that is the Christian Soul Prepper Podcast. And I hope you like the new logo. It's quite easy and it's free to download, so download everything now and listen to them later. As we come closer uh, to the close of our series on persecution, which is now our 14th episode, which I believe will be about 17, which I also believe is the longest, most thorough look into persecution by any ministry I know as a series. So, praise God for that. I pray you have been blessed and equipped mentally, emotionally, and spiritually for what is to come ahead for all faithful believers in Jesus. Please download everything you can from my website or wherever you get the podcast. It's free for a reason. I don't want any barrier for the body of Christ to receive the truth and much needed spiritual support. So please take advantage of the opportunity. With that being said, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for a correct perspective about persecution, hard times, and trials of our faith. Now guide us as we learn that we cannot live for ourselves but for you. As we walk this walk of faith, give us courage and confidence to tackle every obstacle to our faith through radical obedience built upon the foundation of a trust in you. And give us the Holy Spirit and guide us unto your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Carry your cross, part four in the series. That's, I think, this is video three for the section, though. So it might be a little confusing. So carry your cross, part four, precept number five. Now, if we had died with Christ, we believe that we also will live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Romans 6, 8 through 12. We have covered a lot of ground talking about suffering for Jesus. We must be willing to suffer for him as he has suffered for us. We must be willing to die for him as he has died for us. This does not mean we'll always have to suffer or that we will all die. It means that as the body of Christ, we must be willing to do so. It's our default position of existence, ever ready, ever vigilant to follow the example of our Lord. Jesus instructs us all. Those who want to save their lives will lose them, but those who lose their lives for me will save them. Luke 9.24 For whosoever is ashamed of me and of my words and this adulterous and sinful generation of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Mark 8, 38. The book of Romans reveals the right mindset on how to conduct lives in this world. For none of us lives to himself and no one dies to himself. For both, if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, both if we live and if we die, we are the Lord's. Romans 14, 7 through 8. If we believe this and walk out our faith that we can please our Lord, we can then understand the following verse. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Philippians 1, 21. 
This way, no matter what happens, we are good with the outcome. Be encouraged, family. God has done all this so that we will look for him and reach out and find him. He isn't far from any of us, and he gives us the power to live, to move, and to be who we are. We are his children, just as some of your poets have said, Acts 17, 27-28. In our discussion of baptism, we learned we have already died with Jesus. Any outward fulfillment of this fact only proves it was true in the first place. Now, if we died through baptism, then we will live forever with Jesus. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died to sin once and for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. Romans 6, 8 through 12. Jesus encourages us even more with these verses. The key to understanding these verses is to separate the temporary and the eternal. We are not guaranteed that we will never suffer. We are guaranteed he will always be with us. He will repay us for it, and our faithfulness will bring glory to God when this happens. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you not to worry about your life. Don't worry about having something to eat or wear. Life is more than food or clothing. Look at the crows. They don't plant or harvest, and they don't have storehouses or barns. But God takes care of them. You are much more important than any birds. Can worry make you live longer? If you don't have power over small things, why worry about everything else? Look how the wildflower grows. They don't work hard to make their clothes. But I tell you that Solomon, with all of his wealth, wasn't as well clothed as one of these flowers. God gives such beauty to everything that grows in the field, even though it is here today and thrown into a fire tomorrow. Won't he do even more for you? You have such little faith. Don't keep worrying about having something to eat or drink. Only people who don't know God are always worrying about such things. Your father knows that what you need, but put God's work first and these things will be yours as well. My little group of disciples, don't be afraid. Your father wants to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 22 through 32. We will not all die for our faith. We are called to die to ourselves. We must cast off our fears and worries and walk in this life as children of God. God knows everything about his children. Nothing is beyond his reach and care. You belong to him and will be his forever and ever and ever. There is nothing about you, not even the very hairs on your head, will be lost. You are covered and preserved through your suffering and God's love. Pressed down, overflowing a hundred times over, you will be repaid. Jesus tells us, I tell you, My friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies and not one of them is forgotten before God? Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. You are of more value than many sparrows. Luke 12, 4 through 7. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. But not a hair of your head will perish, but your endurance you will gain your lives. Luke 21, 17, 19. Again, we read, certainly all who are guided by God's spirit are God's children. You haven't received the spirit of slaves that leads you into fear again. Instead, you have received the spirit of God's adopted children by whom we call out Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. If we are his children, we are also God's heirs. If we share in Christ's suffering in order to share in his glory, we are heirs together with him. I consider our present suffering insignificant compared to the glory that will soon be revealed to us. All creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal who his children are. Romans 8, 14 through 19. You are his child. As we wrap up what it means to be like Jesus as we carry our cross, we will cover one more warning from Jesus. We will also cover one more assurance from him. Then we will look at the glorious preview of the world to come. Be encouraged, family. The universe and all that there is belongs to you. Do not forfeit it by giving up your faith through denying Jesus. He tells us, I am sending you like lambs into a pack of wolves. So be as wise as snakes and as innocent as doves. Watch out for people who will take you to court and have you beaten in their meeting places because of me. You will be dragged before rulers and kings to tell them and the Gentiles about your faith. But when someone arrests you, don't worry about what you will say or how you will say it. At that time, you will be given the words to say, 
but you will not really be the one speaking. The spirit from your father will tell you what to say. Brothers and sisters will betray one another and have each other put to death. Parents will betray their own children, and children will turn against their parents and have them killed. Everyone will hate you because of me. But if you remain faithful unto the end, you will be saved. Matthew 10, 16 through 22. Again, he gives us this assurance. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hands. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. And I and the father are one. John 10, 27 through 30. As I promised, here's the glorious preview of the kingdom of heaven. This belongs to you. It is yours through your faith in Jesus. You will live forever and enjoy it for all eternity. Oh, the pleasures that is to come our way. I'm personally looking forward to hearing the music of heaven. Let's read. I saw a new heavens and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth have disappeared, and so had the sea. Then I saw a new Jerusalem, that holy city coming down from God in heaven. It was like the bride dressed in her wedding gown and ready to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice shout from the throne. God's home is now with his people. He will live with them, and they will be his own. Yes, God will make his home among his people. He will wipe all tears from their eyes, and there will be no more death, suffering, crying, or pain. These things of the past are gone forever. Then the one sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Write down what I have said. My words are true and can be trusted. Everything is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give water from the life-giving fountain to everyone who is thirsty. All who win the victory will be given these blessings. I will be their God, and they will be my people. Revelation 21, 1 through 7. Amen. So let's recap. Now, this one's a little bit shorter, but you have to remember it came after the end of three other very long chapters or days in the book, right? But the gist of it is this. We are basically guaranteed promised, you know, like ironclad warranty provision provided persecution and suffering. Jesus clearly says that in this life, you'll suffer tribulations, right? Or sufferings and persecutions. In a verse we read, he basically said the same thing that, you know, you'll be hated by everybody for my name's sake, right? But don't fear, I'm with you. So, what is one of the defining marks? of a true follower in Christ. He doesn't fit in. She doesn't fit in. Right? Goes against the crowd. Being the, you know, the sore thumb. Squeaky wheel. The one that's making a fuss all the time. Now we have to do this with wisdom, but the idea here is that, you know, when when the rubber meets the road, it's the true believer in Jesus Christ that will stand up for God. Yep. You're worth more than two uh, sparrows sold for a penny or five sparrows sold for a penny, right? And so God pays attention to what you're doing. He, he knows when you're standing up. For he knows when you're speaking out. He, believe me, they're watching you right now. When you're alone, when you're in public, they're watching. Okay. They know what's going on, right? And I personally believe that we all have ministering spirits or angels that follow out, around and watch us too. So, don't think your passive denial or failure to stand up and speak and, you know, present yourself on God's behalf is going unnoticed. But also, don't think, not for one moment, that when you do it, it's being forgotten. Nope, it's being written down. You're getting credit, right? And so, be encouraged. Ours is the victory. Right. And Paul clearly says, you know, that in Romans eight, that all creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal who his children are. Romans eight, 14 through 19. Right. Are you one of those kids? I'm one of those kids. I know that I'm ready to die. Now it's, it's a foregone conclusion. Hence the book that, you know, as a true believer in Christ, we're already dead. We have died to ourselves. Right. Now, it's a process, so I mean, they, they get the flesh out, you know, but the initial step is, hey, I repent of my sins. I'll be baptized. I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price. And now I have a responsibility to please the one who saved me, who purchased me, who bought me back from sin and death, 
right? And so be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. A lot of people are being sold a bunch of fluff. So when bad things happen, they think that somehow they failed or God has failed them. That like Christianity is only successful as if you never have a problem. Nowhere in scripture will you ever find that. Nowhere. Okay. What it does say is that a righteous man has many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from all of them. Okay. So be encouraged. That's our kind of our recap, but just be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. Do what is necessary. Commit yourself to come. Pardon the expression, but it's true. Hell or high water, you will not forsake your faith and trust in God. You will pay whatever cost and price it takes, and you will keep marching forward to that glorious day, knowing, 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 knowing your Father in heaven is watching you. Jesus, your Lord and Savior, is watching you. The angels are watching you. The Holy Spirit is watching you. Everybody knows what you are doing or not doing. Okay? So put that in your hat. Keep it. I was going to say put it in your pipe and smoke it, but I don't want to endorse smoking. But it's just a saying. It'll be worth it. You're going to get repaid. Everything. Have confidence in that. And if him dying on the cross isn't enough to prove to you that you will get repaid, I don't know what it is. So you will get repaid. Be encouraged. March forward. Don't give up. Realize that your life is basically a movie theater to he from heaven you know they're watching the show that is your life and watching all the drama and all the sacrifice all the hurt all the joys all the successes right and they're all taking notes so be encouraged let's pray daddy we praise you for considering us worthy to share in the life of jesus christ we live die and live again through our faith of this everlasting covenant our faith makes us complete to be obedient in all things be it a life we live according to your will, or a death we die for our testimony. Our lives are yours, and will ever be yours. We have gained our lives by giving them to you, and one day we will rise from the grave to be in your presence forever. Oh, our souls long for that day. Come, Lord, quick. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. Now, be sure to go to WeShallBeLikeHim.com, download your free copy today, and be sure to share these blessings with those you want to encourage in their walk with God. I have something else I want to talk to you about real quick. So, I made a mistake since I started this ministry. I assumed everyone who would like to donate would just somehow figure it out and know what to do. Yes, that was a little ignorant on my part. <sighs> Naive, maybe? I don't know. But it's also hard for me to make it a subject of discussion because I don't want you know, to solely the gospel of some money generating fleece the flock operation. Yet, just as Paul did in the New Testament, he asked for assistance and help. I also would be a poor steward of this ministry if I did not look after all the needs of the ministry. So I came up with this brief, short, non-intrusive statement to cover all the bases. So here it is. If you feel so led of the Lord and want to know how to donate to this ministry outreach, please visit brotherlance.com and scroll down to the bottom of the main page for the PayPal link. Thank you and may God's blessing rest upon you. So sweet and simple and not we're going to die. Give me a million dollars or the Lord's going to take me home. Who could that be? Type message, but one that will help, you know, me to remain faithful in stewardship and give the necessary information to the hearer. Uh, this will be found at the end of our podcasts and videos and such. And that way it's not intrusive. It doesn't look like browbeating, but it provides the necessary information, you know, for the hearer. And so uh, there you go. It has been unveiled. So God bless you and let your light so shine before men so that they might see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us in this time of fellowship. Visit WeShallBeLikeHim.com to download your free copy of a 45-day transformation devotional. Be sure to check out our website at BrotherLance.com to stay up to date. We really appreciate your support for sharing with your friends and family and leaving positive reviews. Together, we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ.
This has been the Christian Soul Prepper Podcast, preparing your soul for the second coming.